had a struggle grade. Mm -hmm. You grew up, you're 70 years old, mm -hmm. you grew up in the back of the bus, in a separate school, separate but equal, ha, 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 we know that wasn't the case. Ray Cotton Pickin' Charles wasn't allowed to, to stay at the, at the white hotels in town. Mm -hmm. He refused to play Augusta because they'd separated the white and the black crowd out at Bell Auditorium. We know the world you lived in. i got to tell you something. Mm -hmm. It ticks me off to hear these mealy-mouthed 25-year-old punks down at Cherry Tree Crossing come out with this great tale of woe about how hard their life is. They don't have a damn clue, Grady. But that, those, they don't have a damn clue. Those people, th those people's lives are probably hard, but not in the sense that perhaps we went through when and I was coming. Not even close. But not that, even that, close, that's Grady. That's not the reason for the riot in Austin. Well, they say it is. Well, well, they may have had some instances with cops coming through, using abusive language to them, toward them, arresting them uh, uh, unlawfully. Well, these experiences... I've had, a, I've had a bad experience with a police officer in my life, too, and I also was arrested when I was a young man for a very, very stupid reason. Yeah. You, know what, you know what I did? Mm -hmm. I got angry at that cop mm -hmm. and laughed about that cop. I don't hold it against all of them. You, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something, my friend. I've been divorced you, twice. You, I wouldn't you, have, I would have never looked at another woman again in you, my life after that second divorce. You, you had I not been able to separate You were educated. That's the difference, officer. Well, I, 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 the incidents that I've had with cops, I could have, if I wasn't educated, I could have uh, done similar things that the people in Cherry Tree did. I, but the point is, Austin, is that people ride for different reasons. Well, and it doesn't always have to be their experience. They are caught up in a ride. It, they got sponsors of rides. One or two people will start throwing a brick and people over there just get caught up. That's what happened at soccer games. That happens at football games. That happens all over Austin. It's not just in Cherry Tree that these kinds of things happen against cops. I, I don't see uh, people, even in the sports riots, I don't see them throwing uh, yes, they do. Molotov cocktails You're, at the league. Listen, at the Creek ride just happened several weeks ago. Oh, that's the Greeks. Uh, yeah. Well, well, we just still talking yeah, about riots. But you got idiots, at Grady. I mean, complete idiots who are acting like idiots, and they got, they've got to be identified as such when they're acting that way. It's just like, you know, I've, I've got a 17-year-old well, daughter. Let's, let's, say, let's say they were idiots. Now, we, we made that statement. Now, let's try to understand why people ride. Well, we got to Brady, get to the... To the to I, 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 okay, I, and I'm dying to hear that, too. In the piece that I wrote for the it, Spirit that ran, I guess, about the same time yours did, mm -hmm. I asked the question, what, how do we understand this in Lily White, suburbia out here in columbia you county. have to leave little white suburbia but, columbia county but there's no and, there's and no there's no way that a visitor in cherry tree crossing is ever going to get the experience of living there i don't know but i tell you somebody said they knew about black people and uh, your friend Andy cheek made the statement that he's gone down to cherry tree several times with marion williams reverend williams and having done so he thinks he understands people living in that area. Well, I, dis I disagree with Andy. I don't think there's any way you can understand. You can't. You can't. Okay. You're right. I agree with you. But at the same time, again, it offends me to my soul to hear some 25-year-old, gold-tooth-wearing, uh, jalopy-driving punk say that eh, we're, we're being held down. You're not being held down. You, you can turn on a TV and see what real life's all about in the way that you're supposed to be. You've been exposed to Laney High School, which your children went to. Mm -hmm. You've been exposed to uh, black leaders in this community that have done very well in life. Even, even the black entertainers in this area have done very, very well from uh, uh, Jesse Norman to James Brown. You see the kind of life that exists if you behave yourself and you choose a different way. Now, there are peaceful people living in Cherry Tree Crossing, mm -hmm. especially the elderly folks down there. If they behave themselves, just like most of the other neighborhoods in Augusta do, these young people that are constantly misbehaving, they got to be taught a lesson. I, I don't know any other way to put it. And also, let but me you ask can't you kill them. You can't just shoot them Grady, to teach I, them a lesson. No, also. you absolutely you don't. But when you aim a 6,000-pound car, now, they you go talk. back to the aim. Now, let's wait on that. Okay. Let's don't, let's don't okay. even talk just, about just that because we don't know the facts. Keep in yeah. mind that Elmore was found in the vehicle after it had driven past where the officers were, meaning he had to have been behind the wheel of the car unless they shot him outside the vehicle and put his body in the car and then moved the car. Mm -hmm. But all the witnesses at the scene said the gunshots occurred as the car was moving 
and he ended up where he ended up. Yeah. So, the, the, and, and we were not going to solve it until we get no, the and report. I understand, yeah, and I understand. we're not going to solve that. And, and, and I would like to wait because I want, I, want, I want the policeman to be given a fair deal. And I also want Justin Elmo to be given a fair deal. If he was not aiming the car at the cops, if their lives were not in danger, then I think somebody should say so. If their lives were in danger, then I think somebody should say well, that. Well, just in the case of Alfago Davis, do you think when the videotape comes out that there are going to be in, that there may be some people in the black community who see it one way and in the white community who see it another no matter what? You're always going to have that, Austin. But we trust those people who are supposed to look at it and give us an honest answer to do so, and that's the sheriff and the GBI. Well, you're exactly right. And keep in mind that unlike the days when you were coming up, mm -hmm. the men and women of color that work in law enforcement and in, in the prosecutorial uh, arena as well, you've got your solicitor, Harold Jones, black man. you got Ed Tar I mean, you got plenty of political leaders now who are genuine representatives of the uh, working class black community who understand and know what's going on. They're not tokens. Mm -hmm. So when you've got all those folks coming together and uh, they all tend to agree that the right thing was done, even if it was a sad thing. Now, they said that? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, saying. Oh, okay, I'm if saying, they no, come well, together. No, what they did was they did come together and express outrage and disappointment that the neighborhood acted the way that it did, that Cherry Tree did. They said that right off the bat, and, and to the ministers that sure, uh, sure, and I can understand, out. I can understand them saying that because that was against the law what they did, and they should condemn that. Grady, let me uh, let me ask you this: a place like Cherry Tree Crossing or Underwood Homes or any of our public housing complexes, I personally think the people that live in those places are guests of the taxpayers. They are there because people like you and me pay a whole lot of taxes and provide for them a living they cannot provide for themselves. Now, just like a guest in your house or, God forbid, even your own child or my own child in our own house, when you exist on the good graces and generosity of others, you better hold your damn tongue no matter what happened, unless you're, you're personally greeted with you know, obvious proof of mistreatment. These folks that want to march out of this building and talk about how bad it is to live down there, if you don't like it, get the hell out, you know? Go make a life for yourself somewhere. Who's keeping you chained to the housing complex? It reminds me a lot of the Hyde Park business. Is there an in invisible barrier around that place that doesn't let people out of there? No. And it, and, it, and it insults me, again, as a taxpayer, that they've got the audacity to take money out of my pocket and then gripe about the conditions that they tolerate themselves. Let me tell you something. Justin Elmore wouldn't do what he did in my neighborhood. You know why? Because he'd have eight neighbors taking aim at him out of our windows. I mean, you talk, ain't no cops needed out in Columbia County. Now, perhaps one thing that Elmo could do in, in your neighborhood and my neighborhood, because I live up the street from you, not too far from you, is uh, he could probably embezzle some money. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he, could. he probably could uh, swindle. He could absolutely. do he, those he's things. He's not going to sell drugs out of his window, though. No, he won't. But then he's going to, uh, somebody's going to sell some drugs in our neighborhood. Well, but you know, and, and you're and absolutely right. I got yeah. a few neighbors of mine that uh, drive the rest of the neighborhood up the wall. Mm -hmm. But they do it behind closed doors, and you can't really, unless you're standing there watching them and staring at them. There, there's no such thing really much as drive-by crime in Columbia. Now, occasionally there is, and it's a big news story when yeah, it is. Yeah. But just like the situation that happened at River Glen mm -hmm. Apartments mm -hmm. two nights ago, mm -hmm. you had a young man shot down dead. You had, uh, a few weeks before that, a 15-year-old kid helping his disabled uncle shot in the back of the head. Right. Not a peep. Mm -hmm. Out of any of those rioters at Cherry Tree. You're not, gonna, not a damn word out of them. You're not going to have that, Austin, because the rioters are angry with the police. How about being angry with the real killers out I'm there? saying they are angry with the police for other reasons other well, than what happened at Cherry Tree. Isn't it amazing that one of their own 
can 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 commit murder in the most ugly fashion, sure. and they don't give a rat's Absol ass. Absolutely, it happens every day. Oh man, right, but I'm not agreeing that that is right. But it happens oh, also. All right. We we have to take a break for news. We'll come back more with Grady Abrams just after this. Stay with us. News Talk 580 WGAC Augusta, the Austin Road Show, Gail Mino News Time 430. Because AAA, of course, is famous for their uh, cruise shows and so forth. But we do want to emphasize that this is not a cruise show. This is the Augusta Travel Tour Show. And this is to take you places maybe you've always wanted to go. Maybe you wanted to go to Switzerland or a, a rail trip through Canada or something like that. Maybe the exotic animal tour. Uh, maybe you wanted to go to Peru. There are all kinds of wonderful places you can go to that don't involve cruising. And we have the top vendors that arrange these tours here. This all starts at 6 o'clock. We're not ready yet, but you can come by any time if you like. But definitely between 6 and 8, we have inside tours, uh, pleasant holidays, travel impressions, Rocky Mountaineer Rail. I've been looking at some of their tours, and I'll tell you, some of the scenery they can show you is just mind-boggling. Trafalgar Tours, uh, AAA's very own signatures with many unique trips that are found nowhere else. We'll have 15-minute presentations from each of those vendors. We have refreshments for you and lots of materials for you to take home to study. So why not go somewhere different this year? Uh, forget the cruise. That's great. Everybody loves cruising. But it's time for some real adventure and a real holiday with Augusta Travel Tour Show. So come on by and check out all these tour uh, representatives that we have present. Uh, see their presentations. Pick up some of their literature. They'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. It's all from 6 until 8 this evening. So if you're on your way home, uh, drop by, pick up the wife, pick up the husband, and maybe grab a bite to eat if you like, although we will have some refreshments here. And come see us 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock at AAA Travel, 3601 Walton Way Extension. That's on the corner with Wheeler Road. Starts at 6. Hoping to see you then. Thanks, Austin. And thank you, Harley. We'll check back in with Harley in just a few minutes. Grady Abrams, former Augusta City Councilman, in with us this afternoon. And uh, we established in the in the first segment with Grady uh, some of his personal experience with the riots back in 1970 and uh, what a sad time that was for the community. I do want to mention the article that uh, Grady wrote for the Metro Spirit uh, a couple of weeks ago. Actually, I think this came out on Christmas Eve day, and there was something that I didn't quite understand that he wrote, and I and I got it wrong, and I went I, I went back and looked at what he wrote, and I I don't know whether he maybe should have worded it differently or if, if it was edited incorrectly. Anyway, um, let let me let me read to you uh, a little segment here on WKZK Radio. I had some harsh remarks against the rhetoric. WGAC's Austin Rhodes uses on his program. He could very well, no, he very well could be the most dangerous person to have at a microphone in the tense racial climate we are in today. I would hope that Austin would ask what's best for the community and not what's best for him and his station and do it. He's a smart man. I feel he can communicate effectively without the demagoguery he uses daily on his radio program and especially the commentary he has made recently on the Cherry Tree Crossing shooting incident. Now, Grady, I ask you about this, and you say that uh, the comments that you made on KZK were a couple of years ago involving other <coughs> right. other issues. Mm -hmm. So, did you have any problem with anything you heard me say on the cherry? Because I I was I was flabbergasted when I heard that. I'm like, wait a minute. I I was extra special careful about how I talked those couple of days because I knew going back to the experience of reading what happened to you in 1970, what can happen. If, if you're not careful on the radio, and I'm not blaming you for what happened back in 1970, but um, you got to be careful. What do you think? Well, what, what were you talking about specifically when you said that I was the most dangerous person to have on the microphone? Well, Austin, we had a tense situation going on at the time, and I thought what should have been said was... Let us wait and find out what happened before we make any judgment on this incident. But coming from you, as I heard it and interpreted it, that you had already made up your mind that Elmo was wrong. And he was wrong to the extent that the police officers had a right to shoot him and kill him. That's what came across to me in some of the conversations that you had and you went so far which i thought was immaterial to the issue at hand and the issue at hand was that the cops have probable cause to shoot this man that's the issue nothing else was an issue because 
his criminal record, what he had done, and I don't think any of that or most of it was not involving uh, violent crime. <clears throat> what he had done was not germane to what had taken place in Cherry Tree at that specific time. And that was the issue we needed to deal with, and not bring in his family, his sister having killed somebody, his brother, his father, and everybody else in his family. To me, this was what I call building a case against Elmo, who had died already. But uh, uh, those kinds of things only exacerbated the situation and made more people angry in the community. If you had just restrained yourself a little bit, just a little bit, and you could have discussed the incident, but not judge it until you had gotten all of the facts. And as I said in my article, unless you knew something that we didn't know, well, I, then, I, then you just don't know what happened. I, I thought I made it pretty clear that I had talked to people at the scene who had gotten a first-hand description from the officers and also that had seen the videotape. I thought I, I thought I made that kind of clear. Yeah, but, but these but people Grady, were not and, under and I'm gonna, oath. I'm going to well, yeah, yeah, they well, were absolutely. Yeah, you know, they were not under oath. A.B., put your earphones on for just a second. I got it because you, you were sitting, he, the A.B. sits 15 feet away from me here. And here. I thought, and please feel free to disagree with me here, A.B. I'm, I'm just asking your professional opinion. Don't mm -hmm. lose your job, A.B. No, 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 no. I, uh, I don't no, have no. the ability to fire him, and nor would I <laughs> under any circumstances. Um, just kidding. A.B., it, it, I, I thought my harshest comments were directed at no one but the people attacking the firemen and the police officers. Yeah, I, I, as I said this yesterday, you, you were definitely harder on them than, than the, the, the individual that unfortunately got killed. And you even did comment that your first thing you said on the air, if I recall, it was up near the beginning. I don't know if it was the very first thing. You told the story of what happened, and you were... You went overboard about the fact that it was a sad thing that this guy lost his life. You didn't really go into detail as to what it, ha you know, what he had done and his background and all that at first. At first, you just said, you know, it's really sad this guy had to lose his life. You know, it, was it his fault? You know, you went into that afterwards, but that's what you said in the beginning. Now, the one thing I will say that, that you also, as far as mentioning his family's background and all, that didn't happen until the last few days, unless it was when I was gone or something. Well, I think it may. I think you yeah. may have been out uh, one of those days. With the reason that the family came into it yeah. is because his brother just went ballistic on camera, and I and I played the audio yeah. from him acting out. I do remember us playing that audio. Now, the instant that he inserted his name in this business, and his name is Austin Elmore Jr. Um, I was sent information from law enforcement sources that this guy is worse than Justin was as far as his personal behavior goes. And I looked him up, and sure enough, they were right. Now, what this guy did yesterday, if it doesn't help prove that, and it, the reason I brought it up, and there was another individual. There was, a, there was a guy, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head. It was a very unusual name. And he was quoted in the Augusta Chronicles talking about how bad the cops are. Well... He's got outstanding warrants on him. <laughs> and this guy was dumb enough to give his real name to the reporters. We've got a criminal culture that is being elevated by my other friends in the media as somehow being spokespeople for the neighborhood down there. And I wanted to speak out against that. And the first thing out of my mouth was, this man's brother's been killed. He's emotional already. But does it really do any, any good to put that on TV? I mean, and, and for the radio, for that matter, and we ran a piece that uh, uh, Scott Hudson got, and I think it was with was it with Elmore's brother, the the, the clip with all the. I, I, I'm not sure you the bad yeah, language. you alluded to that earlier. I, I remember playing that clip. I don't know that that was his brother. I, it certainly was never said while I was here, unless it was found out afterwards. Well, I don't, I don't recall. I, I remember that clip, and I, I've still got it in the computer. I could probably you know, pull did, it up. Um, did you hear that clip? Uh, I think I did. I heard it. The little 12 seconds. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. again, I was complaining most loudly about the neighborhood reaction uh, far more than I was with Elmore. Because, again, I, I agree that the, the case on that has not yet been established one way or the other. Um, but, you know, and isn't, isn't it interesting? We live in a, in a world and in a culture. Uh, this entire nation came down on the Duke lacrosse team like a ton of bricks. 
-hmm. Got those guys thrown out of school. All on a lie. Mm -hmm. All on a lie. And I was against that. Well, I was against that, just as I was against uh, the Richmond County delegation uh, uh, jumping on uh, Dave Bobby. I stood behind him because I didn't think he had done anything wrong, well, and that, that was he a, should have been forgiven. That was a massive misunderstanding. Yeah, I, listen, I, I have I don't look at things. I try not to as much as I can. Uh, I try not to look at things in black and white, but in right and wrong. And wherever it falls, that's where I am. And uh, I have people in the black community who don't like some of my commentary on some of the things that they do, especially in the political arena. Oh, yeah, but, and you, but, drew, you drew the ire of, of both uh, Ryan B. And, and Champ Walker with uh, comments that you had made earlier about different situations. And by the way, I, I heard you take uh, Champ to the woodshed yeah. pretty bad on KZK a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you about this. Um, well, and you may or may not have heard this when it happened. Oh, by the way, I just got an email from Scott Hudson. That was uh, Elmore's cousin that went on camera and cussed up a blue storm. A um, couple years ago, uh, we had an uh, incident occur over in North Augusta where a North Augusta uh, officer was following, and with blue lights running, a car that refused to stop, took off, and I believe they knew where the guy lived, so they, they followed him not speeding, or maybe they were, I don't remember. Anyway, the guy went right into his driveway at, at his house, and he was a young kid. I want to say he was 19, 20 years old. When the officer got out of the car and told the kid to stop, the kid hit him with the car. Mm -hmm. And yet they allowed him to go ahead and get away, and they arrested him at a later time. I said that day, when I came on here, I said, folks, this is Alfago Davis all over again, except the cop in North Augusta didn't shoot him. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that Alfago Davis should have been spared. I'm saying this kid should have been shot. Mm -hmm. He was the son of a very prominent white attorney in North Augusta named Martin Pitts. Mm -hmm. And it, it angered me as much as anything ever could that this guy was allowed to walk away, or not walk away, to drive away after running over a police officer. Running over a police officer. Mm -hmm. And the, the obviously deadly force could have been and, and was justified at the time. Yeah. Now, I'll agree with you. When I see stuff like that happen, mm -hmm. it makes me raise my eyebrows, not necessarily that, that black individuals get treated harshly, but that white individuals get off scot-free, let's say scot-free, get off lighter. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm wondering, is it because he's white or was it because they had identified him and they knew where, he, where, he, where to find him? Well, <coughs> you know, it's... Uh by the way, I ran into his father uh, a few uh, months ago and was introduced to him. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't know who he was until the guy introduced me, uh -huh. and I thought he was going to punch me, but yeah. that's fine. Well, <laughs> it's known that people with means usually get away with things uh, that people without means can't. So that just, that's the way it goes. Who you know gets you a long way. Well, yeah, but there are plenty of, of rich folks in jail, too. I mean, not plenty yeah, of them, but there's some. There that, some but yeah. it, that, that bothers me. Not, not that deadly force is used down in the hood, but the deadly force sometimes is not used in the white suburbs when it damn well ought to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I agree with you on that. Uh, I, I just, I don't understand what we can do as a community. And you live in Columbia County now, I believe. Fifteen years. Okay. Uh, when, I, when we get to take a break here, when we come back, I'm going to ask uh, Grady what we can do out in Lily White suburbia to reach out. And by the way, that would include the black folks that live in Lily White suburbia. Absolutely. What we can do to reach out to folks in public housing who may feel like they're without a friend, let them know that there is hope out there. We'll, we'll be back. Stay with us. You ever have one of those days where everything... Bring up a visit with me this afternoon. Grady, what can we do? And I mentioned... Uh, Lily White suburbia. Uh, you live out in Columbia County now. What made you decide a few years back, 15 years ago, to move in, into Columbia County? Uh, my wife had a lot on Point Comfort Road, and uh, we decided when we got married that we would build on that lot. We had been looking for homes in Richmond County, but when she told me about that lot, I said, why not just build here? And uh, I love Augusta. My heart stays in Augusta. My body lives in Columbia County. <laughs> Is it, uh, w w would it be a stretch to say that um, 
you, you will remain uh, loyal to the city of Augusta no matter where you put your head down at night. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I understand that. I, you know, when I'm disagreeing of some of the politicians in Augusta. I, I yes. travel all over the, the country and, and uh, abroad on occasion, and I don't think I've ever had the words uh, Martinez come out of my mouth ever, except <laughs> when I'm filling out a form somewhere right. and I have to give my uh, street address. I always say I'm from Augusta. Yeah. Um, what do you think we can do, particularly out where we live, particularly in places in West Richmond County. What can um, educated people in Augusta, Columbia County, surrounding areas of the CSRA, what can we do to better communicate and to effectively assist the people that seem to have all these problems in public housing? What can we do? I think first we need to try and get to know the people who have these problems. That doesn't mean that you have to physically go visit them can read about them. You can read, uh, just read, expand your reading on people that you don't understand. And perhaps once you get an understanding of them, then you can lend some services wherever you fit in. But I wouldn't suggest that you all of a sudden go down in a ghetto and just hang out with the boys. <laughs> you know, I, I, would, I would suggest that you read and and try to get some understanding of, of the people that you're going to have to deal with. And also what, what it is is that we can't look at these homes as being external from us. They are part of us. Augusta, this area, what happens in Allen Homes, uh, Cherry Tree Crossing, happens to us that live in Columbia County. If any part of this community is going bad, then the whole community is going bad. I gave the analogy of someone having, and I think I wrote you and said if someone's foot was infected and uh, the head looks at the foot and said, well, it's not me, it's you. If you don't take care of that foot, pretty soon that foot is going to infect that whole body and kill the body. But you know every now and then, Grady, yes. you got to amputate the foot. Every now and then you're going to have to amputate, a amputate the foot, but you, you, don't, you don't kill it. You don't kill it when there's still some life in it and some still some possibility. A doctor wouldn't cut the foot off if blood is still running through it and oh, there's no doubt it's life. But if the, there's the no question, hope, yeah, if there's no hope, then you do what you have to do. Um, do you mind if I impose on you? Do you can you stay around another sure, hour? Sure. And would you mind? I'm gonna give sure. you. I'm gonna give you the, sure. the call. Well, I, I want to ask you. Well, I tell you what. We'll, we're gonna uh, talk about this uh, when we get in the news break, because I have something I want to ask him off the air, and then we'll we'll come back and discuss a little bit on the air. But Grady Abrams, a uh, very interesting and insightful conversation this afternoon. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. This is educational and enlightening in, in uh, a very, very important sense these days. We're going to take a quick break for CBS News and the Gail Mino update as well at 5 o'clock. We'll be right back. More fun, more stuff in the Austin Rose radio program. News Talk 580 WGAC Augusta. It's exactly 5 o'clock news time. More with Grady Abrams just after this. Brady Abrams is uh, in with us this afternoon, and he has graciously agreed to take phone calls. I was a little hesitant to do this, number one, because I don't want people who aren't as familiar with the cases that we're talking about as we are uh, voicing opinions on them necessarily. And, and at this point in time, though, if you've got a comment on anything that you've heard us discuss, you're more than welcome. Just use you know, the same behavior you'd use with me. Feel free to disagree with Grady if you want to, but just be respectful about it. Um, before I do that, though, uh, I, I, I want to thank you for something, uh, Grady, and I just did it off the air a minute ago. Uh, or actually, first thing, the, the Harley standing by, and, and we're going to say hello to Harley very quickly before we get back to Grady. Let's do that. Grady is, uh, excuse me, Harley standing by. Grady's right here next to me. Harley is standing by over at AAA Travel, just at the intersection of Wheeler Road and uh, Walton Way Extension. Right, Harley? Yeah, but easy to find, very convenient, especially if you've been over to the Target Shopping Center, uh, you know, Augusta Exchange. We're just a block or two from there. Easy to find. And we have a big event coming up shortly. We're on the countdown now, about 48 minutes from now. We'll have the big 6 to 8 p.m. Augusta Travel Tour Show. And already in the last half hour, we've had uh, representatives from some of these tour companies coming in, bringing tons of literature. So they're going to have lots of stuff for you to take home and examine. We'll have vendors from Insight Tours, Pleasant Holidays, Travel Impressions, Rocky Mountaineer Rail Tours, Trafalgar Tours, and AAA Signatures, that's AAA's own tour company, with many unique trips found nowhere else. So if you're thinking about a trip to Europe or maybe Mexico, South America, exotic animal tour, uh, just about anywhere in the world you want to go, they have a tour for you. 
And uh, it's amazing some of the things I've seen in the brochures that I've been looking at already. You know, we tend to think in terms of these shows revolving around cruises, and there's no doubt that cruising is one of the greatest vacations ever. But today we're going to focus on non-cruise tours. And we have these big companies here who are experts in this, and these uh, lovely ladies can answer any questions that you may have and provide you with just all kinds of information for you to take home and examine at your leisure. We have refreshments for everyone. We have uh, every 15 minutes uh, presentations from each vendor. So all the vendors that are here will have 15 minutes each to make a presentation. And we have refreshments for you and just everything imaginable in the way of material for you to take home and study. So if you've ever thought about going on a wonderful tour, maybe you've uh, cruised so many times you want to do something different, this is your chance to find out what's available, how much it will cost, where you can go, and how many days, everything you want to know. 6 to 8 p.m. at AAA Travel. 3601 Walton Way Extension, the number 706-738-6611. And it starts at 6 and continues till 8, and you are invited. Thanks so much, Austin. Thank you, sir, and we'll chat with Harley one more time before uh, he heads home or actually sticks around for the big seminar tonight. Uh, Grady Abrams with us this afternoon. Grady, I wanted to thank you publicly uh, about a year and a half or so ago. We were in the midst of, of some very nasty business here in town involving uh, the, the now-departed Ryan B., and you got into a rather heated discussion with Champ Walker on another radio station when you made the statement that Ryan B. was ten times worse than I ever was, and he, he took great offense at that and, and argued with you, and you nailed him to the wall. Why? Do, on what basis... Does a 70, at that time I guess you were 68, 68 year old black man decide to take up for Austin Rhodes with Champ Walker? I got to hear this. Well, Austin, I try to stand for what's right. And, uh, you know, color has nothing to do with it. Uh, my experiences over the 30, 70 years have, some of them have been bad as the relationship goes with black and white. <clears throat> but I have not uh, allowed that to interfere with my reasoning, and I try to judge things based on the facts and not color. I thought that uh, uh, Ryan B. was uh, negative for the community. Uh, if he had just told the truth, maybe some of his antics would have gone by, but the combination of his antics and line kind of disturbed me and there were a lot of people in the community who were dependent on Ryan B and they believed every word he said and I knew in my heart that he was lying to them and that that bothered me and uh, of course when I went to Champ's show and Champ may have wanted to defend Ryan because he was working for him or had worked for him I just felt that he needed to be called out and uh, even when I wrote the article in the Metro Spirit about you, I tried to be decent with it and yet point out a, 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 a situation that could maybe not help the situation down Cherry Tree. No, I understand if we talked about I, it. I yeah. understand it. And you, yeah. you said to me on the air before that while you disagreed sometimes with what I said and how I said it, mm -hmm. you never knew me to be anything but truthful. Yeah. And you said that that was the one thing with Ryan B. Right. You, every, every other word out of his mouth is a lie. Right. Right. Um, why do you think it was that so many elected officials, people like Marion Williams and Corey Johnson, uh, which greatly disappointed me about Corey. I think Corey's learned his lesson and moved past it. Warmed up to him and, and continued to defend him and stand next to him. Uh, he had a radio station, and that was the way for them to get their voices heard. So you basically Other think than they that, were... if he didn't have the station, I don't think they would have given Ryan the time of day. Well, I was going to say, since he's not on the radio anymore, you don't see him hanging out with him. And I don't corner. see them hanging out with him. Either. <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, we are going to take some phone calls now, and uh, let's say hello to, well, Andy Cheek standing by. Let's say hello to Andy. Andy, how are you, sir? Hey, Austin. Uh, Mr. Abrams, it's um, awfully uh, good to see uh, you show up for the show and, and actually have the, uh, the courage to come on the air and talk to people. It's, uh, it's a fine testament to you as a man. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate that. And, and you know, I'm listening to you, and, and uh, Lord knows I think we've probably got a lot of the same thought processes, uh, things, concerns uh, about issues going on in the community in common. 
uh, a lot more than I thought. But uh, I, I guess the thing that concerns me, and in, in, uh, and, and I'll say this is is for years now I have, as you as you said, you do try to look at, at people as people, and I, I look at the situation that has occurred in the inner city, um, and I see a problem not just unique to the uh, to the black community, but uh, unique to poverty in places like Cherry Tree, uh, in that you got people piled in on top of each other. They don't have any uh, hope for a future as far as work. Uh, a lot of them have gotten in trouble by the time they're teenagers because of the fact they don't have parenting um, and people uh, to give them the guidance they need at a young age. And yes, sir, I've seen the double standard and I've uh, but I have walked the same street uh, with a lot of the folks in Turpin Hill, uh, down in the areas around the Bethlehem uh, Community Center, um, and, and di different areas like that. I believe I've been on some streets of Marion where uh, the children looked at me like they'd never seen a white man before. And uh, I have a, a pretty good handle on what is going on down there. And when you see a situation where people are attacking the police, when you see a situation where people are um, have no respect for the law uh, or the fact that they are uh, more interested in defending a, uh, a person who has a criminal history who has brought bad things to their community in the way of drugs and other things, uh, defending that or holding them up, uh, is a clear indication that they have a, a very, um, I want to say, non-productive and, and, and skewed view of life. This is why those communities never get any better, because uh, uh, the lack of parenting and, and, uh, and a tolerance for uh, that type of behavior, as that's good enough for them. And I just don't believe that. Every child that I've ever coached or been involved with in school or anything else will rise to whatever challenge you give them if you give them the guidance and the love and the support. All right. Well, let, let's and I appreciate it, Andy. Good point. <clears throat> thank you, sir. Uh, and thank you for calling in. Grady? Well, in trying to understand people who live in places like Cherry Tree, it's going to be difficult if you haven't read up on people of similar situations. Uh, and you may not ever understand them. It's hard to understand aberrant behavior, but you should try. Even if you don't, you should try. Well, Grady, I, I, I bring up the question again, though. Not only is this aberrant behavior, which again, you see that everywhere sure. in all walks of life, but sure. this is aberrant behavior in some cases, in this case in particular, uh, that reflects someone or a group of people who are on the receiving end of a large benefit from the taxpayers mm. and and it troubles me that i hear this massive disrespect of law enforcement and then these people and and the government in general and then these people walk right back in to their government paid for housing yeah yeah well as i said earlier austin i do not condone breaking the law and especially throwing rocks and bottles at policemen uh, nobody condones that, nobody in their right mind, because these are the people who are going to have to end up protecting us. But uh, rights, a lot of people get caught up in them. If you, if you would go and investigate that incident, you may find four or five people who were sponsors of that riot, and the other people just joined in. Just out of curiosity, if, if we were able to verify that any of the residents uh, at Cherry Tree threw bottles, threw bricks, or shot guns at the police, would you favor putting them out of public housing permanently? I'm not going to get in that because I don't understand the administration of public housing. I don't know what they can do, what they can't do, and I don't want to get into that area of discussion until I get more knowledge about uh, the rights of the individuals who live there, even though they may participate in criminal activity. Do you have a right to just put them out because they do participate in criminal activity unless that criminal activity is within the complex? Uh, then the manager does have that right. 
if he finds that one of the residents is doing something unlawful. Well, what I'm saying, I mean, there, there was a lot of there was a lot of latitude, and you you praised Sheriff Strength. There was a lot of latitude given to the crowd in the in the nights following the, sure. the incident, and uh, I, I I think that was a mistake. I, I understand not opening fire on a crowd or turning hoses on them, but there's plenty of, of evidence that implicates certain individuals for acting out, mm -hmm. and I think they should be held accountable mm -hmm. to the furthest extent of the law. And yes, according to the information I was sent, if you are ever caught committing a felony, an assault on a police officer is a felony. Mm -hmm. If you're ever caught committing a felony on the ground, mm -hmm. that is a uh, uh, reason for immediate uh, eviction. So. Okay. Well, I don't have any problem with that, if that's the all right, procedure they use. Let's say hello to Richard in North Augusta. Richard, you're on the air with Grady Abrams. Hello. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Fine, and you? Pretty good. Uh, also, I'd like to commend you for uh, for having this uh, wise man on uh, on your show today. I've been trying for years. He's been playing hard to get. Well, I tell you what, uh, Mr. Abrams, as a uh, as a white man, and uh, who probably, like you said, doesn't uh, understand some of the things that I may need to understand. Uh, I think it's an honor to uh, to be able to speak with you and, and to uh, to hear your uh, your comments on some of the things. And uh, uh, I would love to see you get uh, more involved, if possible, to uh, in some of the things that uh, go on in Augusta. Because uh, uh, if if they would listen to you, or if they would sit down and, and listen to your calming effect, uh, I think you could uh, you could you could make a huge change in Augusta, but uh, I just wanted to tell you that uh, it's been a pleasure listening to you, and uh, uh, I hope the best for you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate, appreciate it, that. Richard. Thank you very much. Uh, Eric in Aiken standing by. How you doing, Eric? Hey, pretty good. Hey, Austin. Hey, Brady. Hey, how you doing? Happy New Year. Good. Good. Same to you. Uh, Brady, you probably don't remember me, but you helped me out a bunch out at Savannah Riverside. I'd like to say thank you. Oh, thank you. And uh, you're, I believe you're a very fair uh, labor relations person. And I, I believe you wasted your time out there. You should have been in politics the whole time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a terrible situation. Uh, I've got a question, though. Why uh, is the results on this case taking so long to uh, come about? I mean, I thought they would come about with the uh, results of this thing by now. I don't know. And... Uh Maybe the sheriff is going to speak to that issue soon. I would hope that he would, because the longer it takes, the more people are becoming edgy about it, and, and more questions are being asked, and more suspicion is being made. So the sooner the better. I, I agree with I, I completely agree with you, Eric, and I have said for the last several years when we've had cases where DNA results or blood alcohol tests are, are needed quickly when we hear back from the GBI that their lab is uh, uh, backlogged, this, that, and the other. I've never understood why some politician didn't come forward and say, here's what we're going to do. We're going to earmark a special fund or a special tax even uh, that, that's good for nothing but law enforcement. And this is, this is going to fund every possible, legitimate, and reasonable need that law enforcement has. There will never be any such thing as a law enforcement cutback or a lab cutback or an equipment cutback uh, because of this tax. And there isn't anybody that I know of that would refuse to or even be angry about paying that. And not one single person that, that would have a problem with that. And it, even if it's a 1% sales tax on everything we buy, I have no problem with that whatsoever. That would fund it because there, there, are certain, there are two things that we certainly cannot skimp on. Number one is national security. But number two, national security at the local level is your sheriff's department and your GBI, and there is absolutely no excuse for them to have to get in line behind the Agriculture Department and the Department of Commerce and the, uh, you know, I mean, every, the trees and parks to get money to protect citizens. That's absolute hogwash, and it needs to be fixed. I agree with that, Austin. I'll tell you what, uh, it just uh, seems government drag their, te uh, their feet uh, sometimes, and uh, oh, they, they need to be thorough on this, I'm sure. All right. Appreciate the call, Eric. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and, and again, it, it, it may have been put to the front of the line. I don't know, but whatever it is, it's taken too long. Uh, the evidence based on the videotape should have been reviewed within 24 hours and inside of 72. They should have had a statement one way or the other. I, I don't understand the delay. And, again, there are very rare cases 
where expediency is just, you know, paramount. And this is one of them. I, I don't understand it. I can tell you one thing. It is not the fault of the Richmond County Sheriff's Department. They wanted this thing settled immediately, if not sooner. Uh, Barbara in Grovetown. How you doing, Barbara? Yes, hello. Oh, Hi. I'm so glad that you have Mr. Abrams on. I applaud the effort on both sides. Um, I was very concerned when I read his article in the Spirit, and I would like to ask him um, a couple of questions, and then I'll hang up and listen to the answer. Um, I'm wondering how long the black leaders will make excuses for the behavior of some of the black community. I know of no one in this country that has more opportunities today than a black person. Um, I look at the Vietnamese who have come to this country and the Jewish people who were certainly prosecuted, persecuted, executed, and uh, everything else you can think of, and they have certainly risen above it. You know, how long, how long do we have to wait our black leaders step up to the plate and say, folks, no more excuses, no more alibis. Oh, you are expected to abide by the same laws that all of us are. Temporary housing is public housing. Public housing is temporary housing and should be accepted and interpreted as nothing less. Uh, I'd like to hear Mr. Abrams' comments on that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> uh, well, well, I agree with you. There's no reason to uphold people who who break the law and people who don't take advantage of opportunities. That's one, been one of my pet peeves, that if you have an opportunity, take advantage of it. And if you don't, then you have nobody to blame for your plight in life. We all go through problems and troubles, and we run into situations that are difficult. But with an education, which I think we, many of us are missing, and, and I have a suggestion to make in that line. <clears throat> I was thinking the other day that uh, when, when a teenage girl gets pregnant, uh, said 15, that means the Department of Children and Services is going to have to come in and and finally probably spend some money, send a check out, and give all kinds of uh, benefits to that teenager in order to assist her in raising that child. What, what I would like to suggest, and I hope nobody calls me a, uh, a person who is trying to redistribute wealth, but since we're going to give money to that teenager one way or another, what I would prefer doing is use the money up front as an incentive to give to teenagers in, in, and they're going to have to qualify. They have to be in certain categories of, of, of living to qualify this, but I, I'm in favor of drawing some kind of legislation that, that money will be given to these teenagers, paid to these girls, high-risk girls, uh, from 15 to 19, not to get pregnant, and their schooling has to be up to par, and they have to graduate. And they have to take courses that teach them manners and things of this nature, things that they're going to need. And Brady, well, I we got to take a break from news, but I have to, I have to ask you this and, and be thinking about this as we go to news here with Gail Mino and go ahead and hit the town here. Um, my parents didn't pay me to do what I was supposed to do. You didn't pay your kid. Right. Both you and my parents would have taken something to our backside that we got out of line. Right. Let's see if we can work on okay. getting inside their fannies a little bit. We'll, we'll be back at 531. News Talk 580 WGAC, where news comes first. WGAC News Time is 531. Good evening, I'm Dale Mino, live at the WGAC News Center with this hour's top local story. A new mayor pro tem has taken office in Augusta. It took commissioners seven ballots today before the first-term commissioner, Alvin Mason, was elected on an 8-2 vote. A series of abstentions by various commissioners extended the process. Mason was considered something of a long shot uh, for mayor pro tem since veteran commissioners Johnny Hatney and Don Grantham were considered front runners for the post. South Carolina Republican Lindsey Graham has taken the oath of office for his second term in the U.S. Senate. Graham says, for the most part, he's pleased with the cabinet appointments made by President-elect Barack Obama. 
Sunshine says he's ready to work with the new administration wherever he can, but he says it's policy, not appointments, that counts. It's not rhetoric. It's not, you know, picking the right people. Is what, that's a start, but at the end of the day, he will be judged and all of us will be judged by the work product. So I'm, quite frankly, optimistic, encouraged, and will approach the, the coming session of Congress and the new administration with a positive attitude. First up in the new Congress program is a fact-finding trip to an undisclosed country with the group headed by soon-to-be Vice President Joe Biden. Tourism is a big key to South Carolina's economy, but the state will no longer welcome visitors on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, at least in person, that is. Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Department spokesperson Marion Edmund, uh, Edmund says the agency will close welcome centers on interstate highways on those days starting next week. The state newspaper in Columbia reported uh, today that uh, the department laid off about 40 temporary workers at welcome centers last month. Edmund says it's hard to staff the centers every day without those workers available. Some under construction work underway at Gate 1 at Fort Gordon will be altered during morning and afternoon rush hours for the rest of this week. That's to avoid traffic delays like those reported yesterday. Officials expect the construction work at the gate to be finished by the end of the week. The South National Story at this hour of the new Congress opened for business at the stroke of noon today. Vice President Dick Cheney called the Senate to order at midday, then began the ceremonial duties of swearing in more than 30 senators who triumphed in November elections. Democrat Roland Burris of Illinois was not among them and informed he would not be seated because his paperwork wasn't in order. Burris pledged a lawsuit, the latest twist in a political drama that began when he was appointed by Illinois Governor Rob Blagojevich, who has been charged with uh, trying to sell Obama's Senate seat for profit. WTAC News Time is 5.33, traffic on Augusta's most accurate and dependable forecasts next. Do you remember Pizza Villa? How about Roman Villa? Austin Road here to remind you that 20 years ago, they became Villa Europa, where they've always been located. 3044 Deansbridge Road is where you'll find them today. Just off exit 5B, the Bobby Jones Expressway. Locally owned and operated with some of the best German food you'll find this side of the Rhine. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, the perfect place for your holiday parties. Gathering rooms that hold as many as 75 people, all tastefully decorated in a great German style. They have classic menu items that all of us will remember that you can find online at VillaEuropa.com. It's been there for decades, but it's stayed in our hearts forever just the same. Villa Europa, an Augusta tradition. 3044 Dean's Bridge Road. It's just off exit 5 via the Bobby Jones Expressway. It's always been there in our hearts and in our memories, and now it's there for you to see online at VillaEuropa.com. Get there and remember the good times today. The pinnacle of top radio success. Rush Limbaugh, the doctor of democracy. Weekdays and Sunday at noon on News Talk 580 WGAC. Depend on it. WGAC News Time is 5535. More of the Austin Road Show with today's guest, Grady Abram, coming up. But first, traffic and weather together. Our first stop to Tower Augusta's only traffic, uh, local traffic with Lee Miller. Traffic moving smoothly around the area for the most part. We only have a couple of acts to watch for now. Warning Cullen, Columbia County at Bel Air Road and Oakley. Purple, no injuries there. And another in Whitman County at Golden Camp and Dean's Bridge. That one should clear soon. From the WGAC 24 hour news traffic and weather center, I'm Golden Camp and Dean's Bridge. That one should clear soon. From the WGAC 24 hour news traffic and weather center, I'm Lively Miller. Miller. We only have a couple of accidents to watch for now. One in Columbia County at Bel Air Road and Oakley Purple. No injuries there. And another in Richmond County at Golden Camp and Dean's Bridge Bridge. And weather together. Our first stop this hour in Augusta's only traffic, the local traffic with Lee Miller. Traffic moving smoothly around the air. WGAC News Time is 535. More of the Austin Road Show with today's guest, the great Abrams, coming up. But first traffic and weather together. Limbo, the doctor of democracy. Weekdays and Sunday at noon on News Talk 580 WGAC. WGAC News Time is 535. More of the Austin Road Show with today's guest, the great Abrams, coming up. But first traffic and weather together. Our first stop this hour of Augusta's only traffic, the local traffic with Lee Miller. That is moving smoothly around the area for the most part. We only have a couple of accidents to watch for now. One in Columbia County at Bel Air Road and Oakley. Purple, no injuries there. And another in Whitman County at Golden Cannon Camp and Dean's Bridge. That one should clear soon. From the WGAC 144 Hour News Traffic and Weather Center, I'm Lee Miller. Miller. Hey, this is Shane Pennington from Cobra. Purple, no injuries there. And another in Whitman County at Golden Camp and Dean's Bridge. That one should clear soon. From the WGAC. 
by the first traffic and weather together. Our first doctor, Tyler Augustus, only practice. Rush Limbaugh, the doctor of democracy. Weekdays and Sunday at noon on News Talk, Friday, WGAC, the Pentagon. WGAC News Time is 535. More of the Austin Road Show with today's guest, Grady Abram, coming up. But the doctor of democracy.
with each other. Our first stop is Tower Augusta's only traffic, a local traffic, the AC, <laughs> with hand on it. And remember the good times today. Thank you. 